Hello, class. Today, allow me to share with everyone a story about my first real job interview. There was nothing in my college business class that would prepare me for the next question my manager would raise. He asked me, "Why do you think manholes are round?" I was shocked. I was always told to prepare for my strengths, weaknesses, and to elaborate on difficult problems and show how I would handle certain situations. Needless to say, I was shocked. I said it was because it's round and it can be rolled. He said, "Right, but that's actually not the main reason. A circle is actually a perfectly evenly distributed shape and will never allow for the cover to fall all the way down into the sewer, no matter what angle you place it in." Well, did you get the job? Actually, I did. I guess my knowledge of the different parts of a circle came in handy. Today, let's cover everything there is to know about circles in under five minutes. Ready? Okay, let's begin. A circle is a closed geometric figure where the center is the same distance from each point on the ends. These formulas are found at the beginning of each SAT math section, in case you forget. Now, moving back to our circle here, an arc is simply any curved section on a circle. A central angle has an angle whose vertex is the center, such as angle AOB. The diameter is the longest distance of the circle and is twice the radius. A chord is the distance of any two points, and anything tangent, bisecting, or perpendicular to the circle will always be 90 degrees. Since everyone already knows the area and circumference formulas for a circle, let's move straight to the length of an arc formula. The length of an arc is simply the original circumference formula multiplied by a specific fraction or percentage of the circle. Since a circle contains 360 degrees, it only makes sense to figure out the circumference and then multiply by the degree measure divided by 360, like so. So, if the angle is 60 degrees and the radius is 9, we have 60 over 360, or 1 sixth times 2 pi 9, giving us 1 sixth of 18 pi, or 3 pi. Similarly, if the value of x degrees is 40 and the radius is 6, then the area of a sector formula is n degrees over 360 degrees times pi r squared. So if n is 40 and r is 6, then we have 40 over 360 times pi 6 squared, or 1 ninth times 36 pi, which gives us 4 pi. Can we take a look at two problems from our homework? Let me come over and take a look. Oh, okay. This looks like what we just talked about. The two inches is really superfluous, as it's only used to show that this is a thick wedge and not a single flat piece of cheese. Recalling our area of a sector formula, we know that 30 degrees is 30 over 360, or 1 twelfth. If 1 twelfth is equal to half a pound. I can now multiply by 12 to figure out the weight of the entire wedge of cheese. 12 times one half is equal to six. Answer choice D. Here in this next January 2011 example, we're given circle O has a radius of six. What is the length of arc ACB? Another easy problem. First of all, we're asked what the arc is, so I can go back to our length of an arc formula. Let's start by figuring out what the circumference of the entire circle is. 2 pi r is equal to 2 pi 6, which gives us 12 pi. Now, since this is a 90 degree marker here, I know that 90 divided by 360 is equal to 1 fourth. So now we multiply by the n degrees over 360 degrees, and we get 1 fourth times 12 pi, which gives us 3 pi. Or choice C is the answer. So what did we learn today? The length of an arc and the area of a sector formulas are no more than just figuring out the circumference and area first, 
and then multiplying it by a certain percentage. We also learned why manholes are round and what the movie Life of Pi is really all about. <laughs> Five minutes exactly.